Hi, I'm Nick Guff, a senior media studies and production major here at Temple University. I'm here with Temple University's new president, Jason Wingard. How are you? I'm doing well, Nick. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks great. for meeting with me today. I'm glad to do it. So what are your top three priorities being uh, Temple's new president? Top three priorities. Well, I just got here 30 days, so we're working on that. But what I can definitively say is, number one, raise the reputation and profile of Temple University. This is an excellent place to study, to teach, to play sports, to do extracurricular activities. I want the world to know that this is the best school in the best city in the country. And so raising the profile is number one. Number two is to reevaluate our curriculum to make sure that the future of learning, which is where we are excellent, is meeting the future of work. What does that mean? That means we want all of our students, including yourself, to be able to get the best job, whatever job you want, and be a leader in industry, and be a leader in whatever function that you want to be in. And so we have to make sure our curriculum matches that. So reviewing that and making sure that we adjust and adapt to the future of work is going to be a priority number two. And then number three is going to be engaging with our community in a more definitive way. This is a dynamic university. We are in the best city, as I said, and North Philadelphia is a community in the larger metropolitan region. It's something that we can take advantage of, whether it's corporate partnerships, whether it's the residential community, whether it is local politicians or leaders. We want to be able to engage in that network because then it's valuable to students like you. Awesome. All right, it's a big position being president of such a big university. Are you anticipating any challenges and how are you expecting to, you know, I think it's going to be, Nick, I think it's going to be smooth sailing. No challenges. <laughs> We're going to be just fine. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get, to, I think the most important challenge that we have before us right now is COVID. So all of the students, the whole school community, we've been gone for what's been a year and a half, really some stop and start off and on. Uh, reintegrating into the residences, reintegrating into uh, the offices, the classroom. Uh, we have a vaccine debate, so let's keep it real. Some people want to get a vaccine, some don't. Some want to wear a mask, some don't. But we're a unified community, and we have to come together, and we have to decide how can we keep everybody safe, do what's most important for us, which is to teach and learn, uh, and then move forward. And uh, that's a challenge for us because not everybody is on the, same on the same page. And so it is my job and our administration's job to message what the rules are and the policies. It's the community's job to do the best they can to be able to adhere to those. Some of those are set by the, the state. Some of those are set by the city. Some of those are set by the university. So if we can get past that challenge, I think we'll be in good shape. Secondly, we have to fire, find an athletic director. Right, so I know. <laughs> if I get 50 messages, I get 100 a day that say, who's going to be the next athletic director? Temple has a long, rich, strong history in dominant athletics, football, basketball, all across the board. And it's important, particularly now, because there's a conference realignment. We're in a good conference, the American Athletic Conference, but there are a lot of schools changing in the other Division I athletic conferences, so there's some nervousness. Where's Temple going to land? with respect to this. And so we want to identify who that next leader for athletics is going to be. So that's an immediate challenge uh, that I'm focused, uh, focused on. And then thirdly, um, I think that because the world is changing post-COVID, the first message that I gave you challenge, it's all about COVID as it relates to health and our experience here on campus. The third challenge is COVID and its relationship to the economic uh, development that is focused in the cities and the states and around the world. It's affecting jobs. So we're all here to learn, to be able to get jobs in the workplace, and COVID is having a very disruptive impact on jobs. And so that's not necessarily something that we can control, but we have to adapt to it. And so once again, you asked me an earlier question, how do we adapt our curriculum? How do we adjust what we are teaching so that the learning experience can relate directly to what employers are looking for when they're hiring? Awesome. So as you previously mentioned, uh, you've only been here for over a month, just a little bit over a month, right? That's right, 33 days. Awesome. But who's counting, right? Who's counting? But uh, what has been your favorite part of being here for just over a month? That's easy, the students. Meeting the students, and, and there haven't been that many, but I have been on campus since I started, and I've been able to meet with prospective students, existing undergraduates and graduate students. I'm talking with faculty, board of trustees. So I have met the community, uh, the alumni as well, and I have enjoyed the enthusiasm that each one of these stakeholders has for Temple University. I'm proud to be Temple's president. 
they are proud to be an alum, a student, a faculty member, a trustee with tremendous passion, and that's what I'm excited about. I wanted to be a leader of a school where all of the stakeholders felt very, very strongly about the excellence that is embodied by this university, and so I'm feeling that in person. I'm feeling it on Zoom, but I'm feeling it in person too, and that's really, really uh, exciting for me. Awesome. What are you looking forward to most about this upcoming school year? I'm looking forward to our students and our faculty being able to come together again and fully appreciate what this learning experience really has to offer. I think in years past, in generations past, this is an exciting opportunity. It's a privilege to be able to study at a school like Temple University. And if you took it for granted before, you're not going to take it for granted now. And so the experiences that you will have in the dorm room, in the library, in the classroom, with your friends, with your faculty members, networking with uh, previous alums. That experience is so precious and it should be so cherished. And so I'm looking forward to this whole community being able to come back together with that appreciative mindset and take it to the next level in terms of how you can utilize it to advance yourself and your career for the, for the future. Great. Uh, do you have any advice for current students? You have like, how about three uh, tips of advice for a successful semester? A successful semester will include that you are optimally engaged in the whole experience. So as I said earlier, take full advantage, don't take it for granted, socialize, network. These are the friends and the people you will be engaged with for a lifetime. Take advantage of the faculty. We have world-class researchers, world-class teachers. Use them. Don't just go to class or not go to class and try to get by with a grade and move on. That's not the purpose of being here. The purpose of being here is to learn how to learn, to learn the competencies and the lessons that are being taught, to select your major, to be able to be a world-class thought leader in whichever area that you're focused in so that you can dominate the world and you can represent Temple University at the highest level. So whether it's the sports program, whether it's your classroom, whether it's your dorm, whether it's the network that's available to you, take full advantage of it and optimize it at the highest level. We're all about being the best at Temple. So my encouragement to you all, the students, is to be the best that you can be and to take full advantage of this opportunity. Great. Uh, so you're Temple's new president, but you're also Temple's first African-American president. So how does that make you feel? That makes me feel proud to represent that this country has evolved to a point where we can have an African-American president, where I can be welcomed and embraced the way I have been. Uh, it also makes me feel sad because it's taken a long time. And so it's important for me to be a good representative of the culture, of the race, of the leadership, uh, and also to bring others along. So we as a community need to do more for all races, all cultures, all identities, in order that our country continues to thrive the way we want it to be, which is diversity matters. So diversity makes the best corporations, diversity makes the best sports teams, diversity makes the best learning experiences. And so I'm proud to be in this position. Some would say it's taken longer than it should have, but it has happened. Temple has done it. We are leaders in this space. And so now it's up to me to demonstrate and be a role model for what what success can look like when we break down these barriers. Good stuff. Um, you obviously love Temple, but how did you know that Temple was the right fit for you when, uh, when you were making the decision? So I grew up in what I call the Wawa circle. So if you grew up where Wawa originally, now they go down to Florida and they go out to Ohio, New Jersey, et cetera, but I grew up when it had a certain catchment area. So if you grew up in that certain catchment area, then you know Temple. Right? And so I spent my early childhood coming to Temple. My father was a graduate student. I went to basketball camp, uh, Coach Cheney, John Cheney's basketball camp. I played in the Sunny Hill League here in North Philadelphia. So I know Temple. I grew up with Temple being part of my blood. And so when I was approached about this job, I thought what a fantastic privilege and opportunity to be affiliated at any level with Temple University, but to be its president and to be able to proudly sit here and speak with you about the excellence and about the commitment to serving our students in a way that's going to change the world, it couldn't be a better experience. Awesome. So we're, on, we're currently on main campus. Uh, this is where you know, most of the stuff happens. What's your favorite part around campus, your favorite spot? My favorite spot. So I like to eat. So I certainly like the vendors, food trucks. Uh, Can we name drop any? Or we, I, I will be careful and I will not name drop because I don't know, I don't know how to tag all of them in Instagram at the moment, but I'll, I'll learn that. So uh, food, Athletics, I love going to the different teams and watching them practice. I love to pop in on the labs 
you know, so there's certain physics labs and biologies that I just get a real kick out of. I uh, love to talk to faculty members. I love the community, the residents. So I spent a lot of time walking around the local community and talking to residents. How can Temple be a better local citizen? What do you do? How, can I encourage you to come to Temple? So I enjoy all of it. I, I enjoy the, the residents around. I enjoy the athletic programs. I enjoy the students. I think we've talked about this before. There's no piece of this job that is not considered a privilege to me and that I don't enjoy. So some bio students shouldn't be surprised if you walk in on their lab, right? I, they should not be surprised. They should be welcome and they should be ready for the question and answer that is uh, what we call Wingard Roulette. Awesome. So I will, I will be sure to do that. Great. All right, what is your favorite part about campus, Nick? Now that you've mentioned Wingard Roulette, right, how about my that? spot, would you say? Or? Your favorite, wh why are you proud of Temple? I'm proud of Temple because I feel like everyone has a chance here. Um, a lot of schools, you know, there's a lot of wealthier people, you know, students from wealthier families. At Temple, I have friends that are lower on the socioeconomic level. I have friends that are higher on the socioeconomic level. Everyone here, we have a certain drive. We have that Philly grit. Um, so I'm always going to be proud to be at Temple Al. I love it here. Uh, I'm happy to meet you today. And what's your major? Media Studies and Production. Okay, and how are you going to change the world and impact it and demonstrate that Temple is the best? Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a I'm a big fan of broadcast, so I want to make sure that I want to get myself a nice job somewhere in network television uh, and make it a more inclusive environment. I'm a minority, I'm gay, um, so I want to make sure that I'm welcoming everyone and getting talent. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to make sure, I want to make sure that I'm, when I choose someone, if, if I own a business one day or something, I want to make sure that they have talent and that there's nothing, there's no barrier blocking them. Mm. So with respect to that, what advice do you have for me on how I can make this a more inclusive environment at Temple? Well, I'll be honest, I think Temple is a, already a very inclusive, inclusive environment. I just think it's great, uh, the clubs and organizations where everyone has a home here. I think just by providing support to those areas of the university, you can continue that. Uh, maybe even more, maybe that could build a more inclusive, more inclusive environment. But uh, I know we have LLC, so people here, we, we have groups for academic, you know, people in the same academic groups, same you know, racial groups, and you know, L people in the LGBT community. Just by supporting those groups, I really think that we can make Temple even more, more inclusive. inclusive. Okay, thank you. All right, here we go. I didn't, real, I didn't realize it was going to be a reverse interview here. Uh, right? You know, this is what Temple said. You <laughs> killed it. Oh, so thank Temple you. students thank know you. what they're doing. <laughs> thank I love you. it. <laughs> All right, so just a few more here. I have it on good authority that you're actually the best dad. You're the best dad, apparently. Uh, so what's your response to that? The best dad? That's what I heard. Ah, I get to answer the question. You're not going to ask the kids, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, well, I have the microphone. Uh, well, I certainly have more kids than most. So I have five children. They range in ages from 12 to 21. Two of them are in college. And so I've been able to leverage their expertise, their relationships in school and in the community to inform how I should be a better leader, right? And so I don't know about the best dad, but an informed dad, a dad that listens, a dad that cares, a dad that wants to do the same thing that you and I are talking about. So our, you can imagine what our lunchtime and our dinnertime conversations are like. You know, it's not just eat and talk in silence. It's a lot of questions that I just asked you. And so they teach me. And when I coach senior executives, which I do a lot of, I say that reverse mentoring and reverse feedback is just as important as what you are asking somebody to do who is a subordinate. So if I am your manager, I need to ask you, what is it that I can do to be a better manager? How can I communicate better? What is it that you need to be able to perform in your best way, right? And so I do that as a dad. I ask my kids all the time. It's not always, sometimes, many times, it is this is what you need to do, my way or the highway, but often it is, how can I do this better to make sure that you are the best you can be? So I think that's the advice that I give to many parents so they can be the best parents. Awesome. All right, last one. And I think you can name drop here. Best cheesesteak in the city of Philadelphia. Abner's. I, I like Whoa. Abner's. So never even heard of it. Where's this, never where's this Abner's. place at? Abner's is, you don't know where it is? No. Okay, well, I'm going to let everybody look it up. You know, I'm name dropping. I spent a lot of time in, I didn't eat cheesesteaks that much because I was an athlete for many, many years of my life. And so I tried to eat as healthily as I could, save for a few butterscotch crimpets. I, you know, that's, that's a weakness. You know, tasty clear pies. So Tasty Cake, you know, has my heart, uh, which you get at Wawa, right, in the catchment area. Cheesesteaks, I tried to stay away from the grease. But in graduate school, when I was, this is my hint, when I was at the University of Pennsylvania doing my doctorate, 
Abner's was close to 10. So that's where I got my cheesesteaks. But Philly overall has good cheesesteaks everywhere. Del Sandro's is another one, you know, so yeah. So. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure meeting you and talking with you. And I'm looking forward to seeing how- You've done a great job. You represented Temple very well. We can see you one day on CNN or ESPN or, or the like. And so thank you very much for taking the time. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much.